Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Reading from the New International Version of the Bible, Matthew chapter 9. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain such evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God, who had given such authority to man. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners." Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus responded, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he's with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and they will fast. So no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that very moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread throughout all that region. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Our glorious Messiah, Jesus, stepped into a boat and crossed over the Sea of Galilee. And verse 1 says he came to his own town. This is referring to Capernaum, 
Remember, Jesus had decided to locate in Capernaum in the Galilee region, and it became his headquarters for all of his ministry life. And so Capernaum, once again, was the city of Peter and Andrew and James and John. Uh, It was really a town or a village. It was a very small place. And uh, if you ever have the opportunity to go to Israel, you can go to Capernaum and see the archaeological digs down to the level of 2,000 years ago when Jesus would have been walking through that area. It's a fascinating little town, but it's right on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. And uh, having set foot there once, you'll never forget the setting from any of these stories in the Gospels. And so in verse 9, as Jesus went from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now, first, tax collectors in those days were hated individuals. They were considered collaborators with the Romans, and that part of their compensation came from overcharging the people for their taxes beyond what the Romans required. And so you can understand that a Jewish tax gatherer leasing the people from their tax revenues uh, was not someone that was liked. But Jesus chose this man, Matthew, and he said, follow me. Matthew got up and immediately followed him. So we're reading Matthew's gospel. When Jesus spoke to Matthew and said, follow me, the Bible records that Matthew did follow him and continued to follow him all the rest of his life. And so we have this gospel we're reading today by virtue of Matthew's answering the call of Jesus in verse 9. In verse 14, some of John the Baptist's disciples came and had a conversation with Jesus. They said, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples don't fast? And Jesus' answer is very interesting. It's, it's illustrative of, really, of Jesus' entire ministry purpose and focus. He said, how can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he's with them? Now, this bridegroom he's referring to is himself. And he's talking about the guests of the bridegroom as his disciples, but really all of mankind had been invited to the the wedding with the Messiah, with the Son of God, with Jesus as the bridegroom. So this should have been a time of celebration. And Jesus said, how can they mourn when he's with them? This should be the celebration time. And he goes on to say, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. And so Jesus was the bridegroom in the first century. Jesus was the bridegroom from the foundation of the earth for the bride of Christ, for the church, and for the faithful Jewish people revealed in the Old Covenant Scriptures as the wife of God. And so Israel, faithful Israel and the the church, the true church, are the bride of the bridegroom, of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this passage says the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Of course, he was taken from them or from us at Calvary when he was crucified. But he's coming back. And it says in the period of time after he's taken from them, God's people will fast. So we don't fast to get anything from the Lord, but as people of God, we do fast in agreement with the scriptures. We fast to change us, not to change God. Then Jesus, immediately following this reference to what his disciples are doing and the fact that he's the bridegroom, he says in verse 16, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. So what he's talking about here is the new covenant has come. With the coming of the bridegroom, he came to initiate a new covenant. And it's not just a patch on the old covenant. So new cloth, old cloth, new garment, old garment, new covenant, old covenant. As this is the reference. And so when Jesus came to initiate a new covenant, it wasn't just to make a little modification on the old covenant. It was to bring an entirely new covenant filled with the Spirit of God, where the Spirit of God is writing on the hearts of men. In verse 20, a woman uh, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus, and the Bible says it touched the edge of his cloak or his garment. And she said to herself, if I can only touch his cloak or his garment, I will be healed. Now, where did she get this idea, friends, if I can only touch his garment? Well, we read in Numbers chapter 15 that the Jewish people were supposed to make tassels on the corners of their garments that represented the commandments of the Lord. And so Jesus was an observant Jew. He knew the scripture in Numbers chapter 15, verse 38 and 39. So he had one of these garments with the tassels, with the seats is the Hebrew word, representing the commands of the Lord. 
And so from rabbinic interpretation, there are 613 do's and don'ts, and there were a number of knots on this garment. This was his prayer garment. And so Jesus, as an observant Jewish man, was wearing a prayer garment, and this woman was calling on the Spirit of God by touching his prayer garment. This became a method of healing in the ministry of Christ. People would come and touch this prayer garment. We see this in Matthew 9, we see it in Mark 5, and also Mark 6, verse 56. But it was really the compassion of Jesus that brought the healing of God. Over and over again, the compassion of Jesus is mentioned. In verse 35, it says, Jesus went throughout the region, teaching wherever he went, and healing every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the vast crowds of people, Jesus' heart was moved with compassion. And so I want you to know today, friends, Jesus is moved with compassion towards you and your situation. Jesus has moved with love toward you and your situation. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. He came to heal every kind of disease and illness, but also every kind of of perversity and problem that this life and other people can throw at us. The great evangelist Oral Roberts was asked if he ever prayed for more power. And he said, I never pray for more power, but I often pray for more compassion. Friends, this is the heart of God, that we would have compassion one for another, and we would recognize the compassion that Jesus has for us. So, Lord, I pray for the listeners today. May they receive the love and compassion that you have for each of them. Lord, may they be aware that your heart is deeply moved with their situation. Lord, you're not a God who is untouched by the troubles of your, your weary and helpless sheep. Lord, you're the loving shepherd. So I pray, Lord, for an impartation of grace in the hearers. May your compassion come forth to heal them. May your power come forth to deliver them from sin. May your power and compassion come forth to change their hearts toward your heart. Help everyone who's weary and helpless, Lord. Lord, you are the great shepherd of the sheep, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.